Part 5. And now, because I stole them, she would be disappointed that I didn't come to her and feel even more guilty. She'd think she was a bad mum on so many levels. But I couldn't just tell Coach all that. I didn't have the time. So I fell to my knees and pressed my hands together. Coach, please. I know I messed up. But please. Please, Coach. The words began to break up in my throat. Please. Neighbours outside were looking at me. Act a fool. Coach noticed them too and knew that this just wasn't a good look. So he told me to get up and get back in the car. Just tell me why, he said, after slamming his door. He put his hands on the steering wheel and stared straight ahead. Why, ghost? What was I supposed to do? My mother don't have any money for running shoes. I couldn't put that on her, I replied. Ask me, Coach said, now laser beaming straight at me. I clenched my jaw as a marble of anger and frustration and fear rolled down my throat. Why didn't you just ask me? Because you're not my father, I snapped. Why would I expect you to help me? Why would you? I felt like my entire body was now shaking. I mean, you got me on the team and thank you for that. You bailed out me out of my trouble at school and I thank you for that too. But you, you, you just not, why you care so much anyway? What are you talking about, ghost? I care about all of you. Why do you think I'm out there every day coaching you all? But I'm different. You know that. You heard my secret. You heard it. That ain't normal. I explained, my voice now straining, ripping into its own confetti. And I get teased and laughed at all the time because I live here and I look like this. You don't live here and you don't look like this. Now stupid tears were welling up in my eyes. And you don't know what it's like, coach. You don't know. Now Coach swallowed something, like bitter air, twisting his face up. He turned his whole body towards me and pulled his shirt down so that the neck stretched even lower. You see this tattoo, he said. It was a dark band diving down into its curly chest hair. It's my Olympic medal. I got a tattoo of it after the man who did this to me. Now Coach curled his top lip so I could see his chipped tooth. Stole the real one. Coach didn't give me a chance to say nothing. He just bulldozed on. That man was my father. He was an addict, and every time he got high, he got violent. He punched me in the mouth when I was 15 because I asked him to change the channel on the TV. The Olympics were on, and four years later, after I'd worked my butt off to make something of myself, I got, I got my shot to run in the same race I tried to watch when he hit me. And I won, and it was the happiest moment of my life and my mum's. And I think even my dad's. But three weeks later, Coach paused, swallowed another dose of that bitter air, then continued. Three, day, three weeks later, he, he sold my medal for a $20 high, and that was his last high. He overdosed right over there on those steps. Coach pointed to a building a few buildings down from mine. Then he started tapping hard on the dashboard, because that's where we lived. That's where I grew up. So don't tell me what I know and don't know, ghost. I sat frozen in my seat. You from Glass Manor? I asked softly. Coach nodded. That's how I know Mr. Jefferson, he explained, which made a lot more sense to me now. So I know, I know what it's like to live here. I know what it's like to be angry, to feel. I don't know. I know, don't know rage on the inside. Coach's face seemed to relax a little, like he was cooling down. And the same thing running did for me, I felt like it could do for you. He looked out the front window and shook his head. But maybe I was wrong. What did you think it would do for me? I asked, realising that he never thought it could help me dunk by next year. Realising I didn't even really want to play basketball anymore. He faced me again, looking straight in my eyes. Show you that you can't run away from who you are. But what you can do is run toward who you want to be. I let that sink in. Who was I? I was Castle Cranshaw, the kid from Glass Manor with the secret. The only one with a daddy in jail and a mother who worked her butt off for me and cut my hair and bought knockoff shoes and clothes that were big enough for me to grow into. I was the boy with the altercations in the big file. The one who yelled at teachers and punched stupid guys in the face for talking smack. The one who felt different and mad and sad. The one with all the scream inside. But who did I want to be? Well, that was harder to answer. I wasn't exactly sure yet, but definitely one of the 